Thank you for joining us on this episode of Diaspora Lounge. Today, the topic is the children who hate their descent parents. It's a very painful one. I want to read out some of the things that these young people are saying because I know that most parents have the best interests of their children as part when they take the decisions, they make the statements that they do, scold, and the actions that are taken are all usually for the, in the best interest of the child. But sometimes these messages are misunderstood and these young people are taking some serious decisions. A lot of them with the intention to actually separate themselves from their families and very painful because I know that this is very unnecessary in many cases. Yes, I also admit, I know that there are also many parents who are actually toxic and who are indeed bullies and deliberately bully their children because they are in the position over them, position of authority over them, and carelessly just make statements, not caring that they are actually hurting the children. And some even deliberately want to hurt their children because it makes them feel that authority, which seems to be more important to them than the relationship with their children. And so I'm going to read from some of these young people and then we're going to make suggestions on how we can approach things differently, hoping that both the children and the parents can understand what's going on and have a better relationship. Let me just play the intro and then we'll First start. thing you want to do is to regain your yeah. power. And it takes two to handle. Oh my God, you need to see what she's going through. The husband broke her neck. So in the past week, I tried to make them understand that in a lot of cases, the parents really just don't mean harm. It's just that this is the way that we learned how to teach children and discipline children from our society. And we're also not probably taking cognizance of the environment. Parents don't understand how this is impacting on young people. And these people are taking decisions like they, are good, they just can't afford to leave home and to cut off communication with their parents. And I know that this is going to be heartbreaking. Some people are already going through this. If we understand, if both sides understand, then we can approach discipline and communication differently so that we can understand ourselves so that all this love that we have isn't wasted because we're applying it the wrong way. And the person for whom you're making those decisions doesn't understand where you're coming from. I don't know if you want to say anything before I start reading. One, one thing, first and first, is the state of the parents. I mean, the way I look at all this, it starts from the parents. Because, um, like I said the last time, uh, there was an idiom which my people always say that, you know, in other words, whatever the parents animal does, the little one watches and learns from that. And they grow with that. Now, you, we becoming parents know what is best for us. We know and we know what our conscience tells us that this is right and this is wrong and this can be avoided and this, well, this is what this is. From the, from the kid's point, we have what we call peer groups and a lot of things. No, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. No, you. this is where you cross the line. If we okay. don't start early, okay. Let me rephrase yeah. this. So let's say the kids have that peer group and they're hearing things different from what the parents are saying. And the parents are saying what they believe, what they know is in the best interest of the child. What we need to make an adjustment here because the kids are hearing something different. It doesn't matter that we have the best interest. Right now, what I would like us to do is to not, let us not hold on to we are right because like if I actually know that what I'm trying to do for my children is the right thing, but they are not seeing it that way, they're just seeing it as me being difficult and authoritative, what is the best approach to take so that they can, I can't just say to them, I'm doing this in your best interest because that's what, that is, this has been my mindset all along before now, before now that I, I understand what is going on. My mindset has been, this is, I'm doing this in your best interest understand this and you're going to understand it in future that that's what i would have thought all along but if you recognize now that if you recognize now that even when you just say that 
they still don't, they can't see it. And you, if, and you, if you decide that you're going to wait until they, until they realize it later. In the meantime, yeah. they are boiling over with anger. So I don't want us to hold on to the fact that we know that what we're saying is right and is good for them. If they're boiling over with anger and they're just rejecting what you're saying and they're already planning that they want to leave you as fast as possible and after they leave you, you don't want to be in communication with you. What is the adjustment? We, should, we need to make an adjustment somewhere. That's right. Remember, every kid, most kids are manipulative in nature. And this form of manipulation starts from how, what the parents throws um, on the, at the kids on their early ages of growth. So you were now, manipulative as a child yourself then? Huh? So Sorry? then you were manipulative as a child when you were younger? You were trying to manipulate your parents as well? Well, as a kid, no, because there's that. Yeah, I remember. Because sometimes I remember being manipulative. Okay, all right. Like, all right. There are other stuff, like when parents are telling kids, I don't want you doing this. I don't want you doing that. Some kids find it like, okay, when they go out, so how do we adjust? They did appear groups doing stuff. How so do we if adjust? I have to adjust, <laughs> Let me read a couple of things to you so that you can understand. Maybe, maybe that will help too. I want us to really zero in on what is actually happening. Say, what would you do different? So that we can actually understand what is happening. So we believe what we're doing is the right thing. If the person, the, the message, the person you're sending that message to, if you don't get it and accept it properly, the, the seed cannot germinate. And we're going to have something that is the opposite effect of what we want at the end of the day. Okay, so let me let me read this one. See, this one says, My dad totally ruined my first day at my new job, my first job. I was late and I know that I was wrong. He started saying, When I was your age, I could do this and that. And you can't even get in on time for your first job. I wanted him to just quiet, but he talks in such a condescending tone. But I lost it and I responded back to him. I said, it's my first time, so let me get into the rhythm. I am not perfect. And then he continued talking. He said, you need to start being more open to taking my advice. You always sound so angry when someone is trying to advise you. And then the person said, my dad is just horrible. I wish he didn't upset me so much on my first day. Even at work, things went great, but I can't even be happy about it. I cannot wait to move out and never speak to him again because this is how he always inspires anger, injects anger into everything that I do. And then another young person now said, that's how narcissists behave. They want to make everything about you and your life about them. They want to Insert, insert themselves in everything that you are doing and they want you to be thinking only about them and the nonsense that they were spewing into your ears before anything that's important to you so that when you get there all you are thinking about is them very pathetic people and they call themselves parents you see what is going on here yeah so so you see in this in this um review in, in what you just read now See, my mind is now directed to what exactly what um, this guy is going through. Okay. Can um, I read another one? It, then you can it, take it two together. Okay. Can I read another one? This mm. one said, this one said, now we're teenagers, we went out with our mom to this shop. And as soon as we, we stepped in into the place, he started saying, oh, we used to come here when you were younger. And I would only bring you here when you were behaving well. I remember those days when I could tell you what to do and you would do it because you were scared of being flogged. Those days you people were so obedient and you were so nice. But now I tell you to do something and you won't do it because you are grown. Blah, 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 blah. So this woman, we were about to have a good time and I don't even know why we came with her. She just destroyed it by talking about how easily she was manipulating us when, she, when we were kids. This is their interpretation of what she said. This person is now saying, and she just messed up the whole day, the trip that they took, because she, she was talking about how she used to match, you, manipulate is the word that they used to describe what she said. In my mind, I'm like, 
where exactly is the anger coming from? But this woman does not understand that. And even I will not understand that. Making a statement like that is going to be perceived as something negative. Mm. So how do we, how do we, and then this, this other one said, I'm sorry that happened to you. This is exactly the same thing in my family. At least I'm hearing stuff like, why don't my kids like to be with me? Why don't my kids talk to me? So with this now, it's like they're seeing you as an enemy and anything you say, it's almost like anything you say can be used against you. Just remember. For her to have made that statement, I think she was, she, was, she took it as a joke. She was making a joke. I remember when, when, when I used to do this, I used, and nobody would smile about it. And instead, mm. they're getting angry about it. So where is the adjustment supposed to be? Also, there are things I have to take into account. Like we have to take into account the moment that we are in. Because for all these things to happen, things make things happen. There's always some sort of repercussion for every little thing. Look at how they translate based on how they understood whatever word coming from their parent, how they just turn it around. You know, this, uh, this era of social media and everybody throwing junks and people reading whatever they want to read. Exactly. They can somehow play this game in our head that makes us think that we are okay now. We are good to uh, stand here and say whatever we have to say because we know it's right because they have gotten all this, all this whatever ideas from different aspects of- uh, That's what I told them. From social media. And so it's, encouraging them and uh but what are we going we, to do about it that's what i told yeah. them i actually yeah, told them that, that don't you think that this is what is happening here you are hearing and seeing yeah. all this giving you so it, it's it's shadowing everything and I mean, it is it does yeah but, but at the end of the day if we don't do something about it it's our families that are going to be disintegrated and you're going to be in pain for your children who have suddenly decided to cut you off when all you were trying to do was put them in the direction for the best outcomes for them, mm. for them in their best interest. Well, um, in regards to that, there are some, there are situations where you just don't know what you can do because learning comes in phases, but only that the, the, there's this thing about how I understand phases um, of growth in people, the phase of when you can talk, when you can scream and yell, when you can smack and the moment when it's no longer smacking or touching or anything but just when you can look and moment when you don't even need to shout but just sit down sit the person down and talk to them as an adult because okay. as much as in, in as much as they are your kids they are adults now okay. so, okay. so so when those phases Pass and you never administer what you would have administered. Somehow it comes back as something irritating to you as a parent. And that is why some parents find it hard to, he should have known this. Well, I'm going to talk to him like that. He should have known that. And when they pour out these things with that anger thing, because they missed a phase that they should have taught or given something to their kids to use or prepare them on their growth, but never did or didn't have the chance to do that now that they are there with the kids and take for instance this guy this kid that was late at work why would the man talk to him like that i mean this man is a, i can understand from the man's side why well you know you shouldn't have whatever in my days i do this yeah but i don't think you can say why would he talk to him like i think any of us will do that yeah, anybody can remember it's a first time first day I, I have i've been to work first day late as an adult and even any of us will talk like that man so now what he I, to me he didn't do anything wrong honestly he didn't, he didn't do anything wrong. but yeah. now that we can see that the recipient isn't understanding and is mis misunderstanding the the, the statement it's not turn down the level okay, turn down the level Tempo, turn down the tempo. Turn it down. Let's make some adjustments. Um, and there's no way you can be 100% perfect all the time. We're not going to always, in the moment, we're not going to always remember, oh, let me not speak this way. But yeah. After we've spoken this way, we can now go back because I'm imagining that 
between this this uh, child and the father. I'm imagining that if the father had now, now, if, the fa if for instance, if someone has gone through this and they overhear this conversation, I'm imagining that someone who has done this would now rethink, if they're not feeling too proud, would now call their child and say, okay, this day when this thing happened, I'm sorry that I made you feel this way. That's right. My intention was so, so, so. So those are the adjustments that we can make because we can't always in the moment, what are you going to do? He's late and you are, you are not happy with him that he's late because you are worried about the impression that they're going to have of him at work. That is why you are, you are, it's not, there's nothing else. There's no other reason That's for correct. him that you're worried. But he is taking it that you are messing up his day by putting this in his mind, making him feel foolish so that he's thinking about it while he's there. So if we can think about these things, then we know, okay, after I've spoken to my child like this, on another day, let me call my child and say, you know, this, when I say things like this, this is actually what it is. And I'm sorry that it makes you feel this way. Because I believe that when, because this one is saying, I can't wait to leave. I can't wait to leave and I'll never speak to him again. Because this is how he always messes up everything. But if you talk to your child like this afterwards, they will, they will know that he's only human. Right? And he does love me. But without any any recap later, and that's all they get, they have no way to come back and say, he loves me. All they have to say is, he's always saying negative things. That's right. So no wonder the child wants to leave and never speak to him again. And I don't believe that the child is right, but unfortunately, they've misinterpreted everything, and this is the result that we get. No, that's, 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 that's what it is. That's actually a remedy to it. If you remember, was it in two, two or three weeks ago when we had the program? I yeah. mean, there is one that I still shared, you know, like yeah. I was, I had it with my kids, but eventually I came back and that instead of pulling us apart, pulled us more yeah. together, exactly. you know, because it's, you know, he knew, she knew immediately that dad, I, I, I understand why you are wrong. I don't understand why you're mad at me. I don't understand that. And then me coming back later and carrying her and making her sit on my lap and talking to her. And she looking at me and I said, just look at me. And then I was those, as I say those words, she knew that I meant it. I'm not just saying it so that she can buy her head down. No, look at your dad. See me and see what I'm saying and understand and read my eyes and read, you know, match it with my words. And when I say that, you can almost see tears run down my daughter's eyes. The thing almost broke me again, but I held her. Oh, uh, the feeling was different. You know, it was it was different. It was it was like two hearts. Just you can feel it merging together. Exactly. But That's what I mean. you know what I mean. And I do that with all my kids. Doesn't matter age. You know, when you have kids, age does not play much part, especially when you want to communicate with them. They say, exactly. if you're standing this tall and you want to communicate with your exactly. kid, come down and then communicate with them. That way, the kid, you share this special bond that no other person understands why that bond is like that. But when we, say, yeah. when we try to create that superior thing, I mean, he's yeah. already your kid. Last week? What did we say last week? We said that fights are not supposed to fight and are meant to break us. Fights are meant for us to examine each other that's and seeing right. where we've actually made mistakes and why we made why we did or acted or said what we what we did and then we can now mend and understand each other better and then mold better instead of separating mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. it's supposed to be so it doesn't apply to only romantic relationships it, it also it doesn't apply it to only married yes it, it also applies to us and our children for you to come to a place of vulnerability so that you can better explain yourself explain the, the the reasoning behind what you did and admit if you made a mistake own it because you are interested in in that relationship getting continuing and being strong and so it's vulnerability that we need right um, right yeah instead of thinking i'm a parent this is a child i cannot speak this way because otherwise we are losing our children that's right yeah. let me read this to you there are some very painful things here there's some really very painful things here. So this one says, does anyone wish they were never born because of 
the things happening at home and the bullying. Hmm? I am really trying to find the strength to live. I cannot take it anymore. Uh, the only hope that I have now is that I cannot wait to die without having children so that I can end this bloodline. Can you hear that? Okay, so the, whoever is writing this, how old is this person, if you don't mind? I don't know. Because don't if know. they are young, there are, there, there's, this, there's a difference between people expressing themselves out of how they feel. If you're if they're 20 and under, remember, there are even some 10, oh, 15 no, 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 years no, no, old. No, 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 there, there was one that wrote to me, this one, mm. this one actually said in my 30s. Oh, yeah, okay, 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 okay. so, yeah. yeah, no, yeah, no, that's okay, that's good. So, so let's just take it that it can be of any age. He, he now does not want to have children as a result of the bullying from parents. So I had to explain some things. Okay, the complaint was every time they'd be saying how much we sacrificed for you, after everything I've sacrificed for you. And I said, look, the meaning of that statement, you know what, you know the meaning of that statement, Tony? It's not that, she, because they actually said they'd be boasting about how much they sacrificed for you. I never asked to be born. Why did you do this and that for me? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not even a laughing matter. That is laughing. true. No, but it's not, but I know why I laugh. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I know a family with yeah. a, a guy who is over 40 now, he's at home, despite everything that the parents did for him. Yeah, he, not even that he doesn't have a job. He always moves from one little thing to another. And those parents will say, despite everything I did for you. And they were saying it before, and he was refusing to do anything. So even finish education, he refused. They were saying remember, before. Yeah, remember what I tried to uh, come up with when we first started, eh? You know, there are things that we miss as parents that we are paying for, even as the kids grow. Another no, thing not is... Always. Not always. Not, 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 no, no, no. When we are talking, we are not talking that everybody does that. But yeah. to those that know, it's directed to them. We understand what we're saying. If we say, oh, women are bad, doesn't mean entire women are bad or men are bad doesn't mean entire. Oh, I understand we, you. The reason I want yeah, to point we are just talking about proportion or percentage. Mm -hmm. The reason I want to point it out is because these yeah. people, I know you know that, because these people mm. have four children and mm. the others are doing very well. But this mm -hmm. one, because, because this one was stubborn and refused to follow guidelines, mm -hmm. probably would have been one of those who would have been complaining that they want to make him do this, they want to make him do that. When they were insisting everybody go to school, this one decided not to go to school. Yeah. So yes. it, see, when you have two parents and one softens up to a kid and the kid is closer to that person, it creates if if that parent and and uh, uh, and the partner don't really communicate and bond good as to create a good strong foundation in that kid. Yeah, that's a that different kid is, that kid is huh? That's a different that, scenario again. Yeah. Yeah. So those things they create this thing in children that makes them think, oh no, you know, this person doesn't love me as much because because the other party loves me and gives me all of this and everything. Now, when this kid yeah. gets to a stage in life, a stage in life, when the other party that has been hard has now decided, okay, whatever the thing is, is what it is. Now you tell me, you take that kid to whatever, start a job or whatever, whatever attitude, whatever behavioral system he's been on growing up, which has formed part of him, is anyway. what he's going to, yeah. And well, remember, there are some family that have raised really good, strong kids. Well, and they're out there doing it. Don't forget, don't forget that the, the discussion today is how we can we're how we can change about, it. I know, I know. I'm just how, following. How we can change our, like, when we want to advise yeah. them. So that, yeah. So, yeah. so, so the, the thing is, I will still point fingers to some parents that are in this category. Learn to communicate with your partner really good, especially when you have a kid under you. Remember, your kid's future is at its best, not your opinion of both parties, but what yeah. your intentions are. 
we yeah. this is what we are looking for to make our kid greater so that once he matures on that phase and the phase and the phase and gets to that phase where he's now going to be independent he knows that he's not missing out he knows exactly because he's been polished by oh, yeah. two of you well, you know? what you're is reminding me of someone that told me recently that in fact i'm i'm just maybe i should have another child because i can already <laughs> it's not even funny it's not funny because i'm losing this one already because the father yes because the father yeah. the father is doing exactly this the father is enabling this child to just be rotten in every way mm. and so this, yes and so this woman is like maybe i should just have another child now because already i can this one is lost because in the home in everything she's trying to do to discipline and to put this child on the right path, the father That's just right. makes sure that he presents himself as the very acceptable and amiable person. So that even mm. when she tells her to do certain things, she will go to the father and go and report her. And then the father uh, will do exactly the opposite. The, pro <laughs> the father will do exactly the opposite. That's and so right. this child, yes, and this child has actually voiced out these things already. When I grow up, I'm going to do this. I'm going to not do this. You are not going to. You won't even. I won't even do anything. That is true. That's exactly what we're talking about, you know. And then on the side of the children, what do I do to make the rest of my journey? Try to see how you can attract every positivity and pave your way with that. And if you intend to have children along your path. Now you know how to address them and how not to address them because it's from the mistakes of our past that we learn to forge ahead. You know, so this is for you younger ones that are listening. I'm not talking about the parents because I could lash the parents on your part, but for you guys, that's just the best thing you can do now to try, try to try not to assimilate all the odd conduct you know uh, that you know that your parents probably must have told you this is not good oh that guy is smoking i want to smoke but that guy is doing this i want to do that is that good for you that's what you have to ask yourself that's, that's, that's actually part it. of what they're complaining about I want to choose my friends yeah. for me yeah but well, that's okay you know at a point mm. I, will, I just said to myself i realized that you can't save everybody you can so, so if parents are saying this person is not a good friend for you and you know the reason they are saying it, but you still feel that you are you have your autonomy and you should be able to determine who your friends are. That's okay. If your friends, if you're keeping that kind of company and eventually you have any negative impacts on your life, that's okay. It's still your own life at the end of the day. But I feel what what our job right now is 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 really just to say to put out there for anyone who comes across this. Your children are seeing your love negatively because of the way that you are communicating. So yeah. let's adjust our communication. Not that we will stop saying what we know is in their best interests, but when we are saying it, we can't just end that I'm making these sacrifices for you because it's misinterpreted. We can't end that I am doing this because it's in your best interest. Or somebody will sit on around tomorrow and say they are saying because it's my best interest making me study so under so, so much stress and there's just so much here so, yeah and you know, being overprotective yes so mm -hmm. so at the end of the day i think what we need to keep in mind is i'm saying these things because i want the best for you because i love you what do you not like about what i am saying i think we actually need to get to that point of vulnerability where we'll ask directly, okay, what is it about what I have said that you don't like? If it ends up like telling me I can choose my friends, there's nothing I can do about it. If I say to someone, don't, these are not good for you, these people are not good for you, you're insisting, I will have to leave it. I have to leave it because I, it's not everything that I can do. You are going to have to face the repercussions of that. But if you actually give me something back, when I say to you, don't do this or do that, and I say, what is wrong with, what I have said to you now, what do you not like about it? Then when you tell me, then I can actually be able to. So I'm asking for us to open the door of communication, open the door, be vulnerable, and actually have conversations with, with the children is what I am, this is my message today. And to remember that just because you disagree with someone doesn't mean that they are an enemy. 
to remember that we are all human beings. Why is this person doing things this way? Maybe it's the way they learned it. So they, maybe they don't understand that it's hurting me when they do it like this. It's for both sides to have that communication and be vulnerable with each other. You know, I mean, sometimes you can tell that this person does, can actually tell this person does not love me because not only do they give advice in that way, they do other things as well. So young people need to stop categorizing parents as enemies when you can't even pinpoint and say, this is what an enemy does and you did this thing. Once mm -hmm. you don't have that, it's not fair to categorize your, your father or mother as an enemy. It's really not fair on both of you because even you, you lose out on that relationship. And I, I was young, I was young once myself. So I can, I, can, I can imagine a young person saying, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't want the relationship, I can imagine that. You know, but I will say to you that you must also know that that's a negative thing. It's not something that should be done really maybe. It's something that should only be done in extreme cases for you to feel I'm going to get this relationship out of my life. It's not something that should be done carelessly. Yeah. So I have to check and examine you know, very closely to know that this person actually loves me, but they just don't know how to communicate. Let's keep that in mind. I remember one of those days as a kid. Another thing that stood in my mind, I stood out. My dad would tell me, my son, you know, it's not like I'd love to punish you, but I know that from the punishment, when you feel the pain, it's not you. You see, that's that beautiful. When wait, someone wait, tells you that, they're actually yeah, trying wait. to explain something. Yeah. yeah. He says, when you feel the pain, there are certain things that parents throw at us. Maybe at that point in time, it might not make sense. Nobody taught me or told me that this makes sense to me. I am the one that came to a realization yeah. what my dad years ago threw at me. I mean, sometimes he does that at, at the point when I'm being punished. I look at him like, ah, dad. You know, and then I go and I sit down and like, does this guy hate me? Does this guy hate me? Yeah, okay. You know, and then my mom will come and my mom and my dad, they work hand in hand. My mom will always come and say, Tony, my dear, your dad doesn't hate you. You know, it's because even though my mom is soft, they are still, still works with my dad. I agree. And then that somehow helps set a, a lot of things going on in my mind. Now that I'm an adult, I've seen the benefit of some of the things that I did not understand when my parent or my dad was administering or telling me what justice was, what being okay and what not being okay was, you know, and now it's helped me a lot. It's helped propel my life. Even though my mom didn't like what my dad was doing, but in her words, she helped she was in support of what my dad was saying was doing but found a way to talk to me and that still makes me hold both of them as an ideal perfect match and if i'm gonna have another parent i said to god if i'm gonna come down here i would love to have lucky them again you. lucky for you mm. okay so before we we close i would like to read some more of these things so that parents can actually see how serious this thing is so they ca can actually see what's going on in some minds of because some people are sitting at home thinking after all uh, i'm doing my best so however they want to take it but i want you to understand the gravity of what's going on because if you don't know then you may not realize how serious it is that you should change your approach so this one says i was beaten over a small issue we were renovating our house because we were going to sell and because I had this, I had this toy that I liked, and my mom felt that it was dirty. She wanted to throw it out, and I said no. And then she tried to hide it, saying that it was ugly, and I told her not to. Then she took it and threw it in the garbage. And when I went to bring it out from the garbage, she started hitting me. She started hitting me, and I told her to not hit me. And I went upstairs. I came back down, she continued to hit me and asked me to bring it back and put it in the garbage, you know? So 
little things like this, can we watch what we're fighting over? Because the person is child, the, the young person is saying it as just over a little thing like this, you are beating me. Right? And really, some some parents do go overboard. Do you really That's have right. to beat that person? Because you said, don't, leave it in the garbage, don't bring it out. And because she's bringing it out, you start beating her. So, so that's 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 out of control. That's mm -hmm. you losing control because you really didn't need to go as far as that just because someone is bringing something out of the garbage. There are some things that we have to let go. You know, know know that your battles and know what battles to to overlook and not fight. Right. That's and right. As soon as I get a career job, I am leaving. That's this person's zone. And now your child is going to leave you over this little thing that you could have just overlooked. Like in the in the in the real scheme of things in this whole world, what is the big deal with that that thing that she was taking out that she feels is precious to her, even though you feel it's rotten? There's nothing there. There's nothing to fight over. I've suffered a lot being Nigerian, and even now I am still suffering. But my hope is that I will die with without having kids and end my bloodline. I don't want to bring kids here and downplay their expectations. And, and I want to downplay every expectation that my parents would have had for having kids um, because that's the only way that I can cope. Because you can't expect after they physically and emotionally abused me all my life, they expect me to go along with the tradition and have a next generation. Imagine that. And this one says, I would like to have children, but the fear of choosing the wrong partner scares me, especially with the toxic father that I had. I don't know whether I'll be attracting a negative energy in a partner because of my negative father. Just imagine that. And this one says, I walk with my head hung down constantly worrying about the next thing they'll be fighting about. Once I even caught myself walking home too fast from school, even though I'd finished classes and I was extremely early, just because I was, I'm almost constantly in panic and expecting to be berated over any and everything. So, we have to be careful. If all these people are gathering together and saying, I want to leave, once I leave, I won't talk to them, I won't have children. There's, there's more I didn't finish reading. If I have children, I'm not going to let them have any contact with them. I'll make sure that my, they have no, no communication with my children. They will not have any contact with their grandchildren. This is what is going on in people's minds. So, Let's learn to pick up that. Well, well, it's already happened. It's already uh, happened. Yeah. No matter yeah. who we to blame for it, let's now do our own part, learn to pick our battles, mind our words, and come back and call them again and say, I'm sorry that you feel hurt that I said this or that I did that. I did it out of love. Tell me how you would prefer to get the message because I want what is good for you. And hopefully young people can understand. Yeah. Parents are human beings. They may make mistakes in their approach, but if they love you, remember that. Keep that at the back of, back of your mind. That's right. And that's, that's the message right. for today. Yeah. Adri was going to share with you about some experiences that she had. Some parents that have been trying to get to their children and children don't want to answer their phones. So she 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 was supposed to come and share how what is going on with those people, but she she didn't uh, make it to this meeting. No. Uh -huh. I know there are there are lots going on around and about us in this world today. There are things that I don't even know that happen, you know, until I get to either watch a little clip or see or hear something. It's mm -hmm. it's it's so hard to believe, you know, that there, there are some parents that are what they are, or there are some kids that are what they are for whatever reason that is. But yeah. um, and I guess at the beginning I, I I did mention yes, there are some parents that are actually bad. There are mm -hmm. bullies. So I don't want mm -hmm. young people to look at this and say, oh, yes, they're talking because mm -hmm. don't know my parents. Yes, mm -hmm. but not like that. Mm -hmm. We've seen them. They are, they are real. And some people don't even believe it because they didn't, they never had any close experience of observing such a thing happening. But some of us do know. We do know that there are parents who are actually evil. And all they want is to get their kick for bullying their children because they don't have self-esteem themselves. And That's this is where right. they derive, yeah, feeling big from. So there's also that. That's right. Let me close then. Thank you for being with me. So, so thank you for being with us on this episode. I hope that this touches somebody's life, some people's lives. Go home and make the changes. Be vulnerable because you care about your family. You care about your children. You care about your parents. Make the changes. And remember that communication is what is key. And keep at the back of your mind that this person loves you. 
keep at the back of your mind that this person is human. When I speak to them like this, they're going to take it this way. When they speak to me like this, sometimes it's in the spur of the moment. It's a mistake by a human being. We're not here dealing with saints. And with that, I close this conversation. Thank you for being with us.